do know, of course, that one in five people will suffer from a mental illness at some point in their lives. In the Eastern Melbourne Medicare local region, that actually accounts for 84,000 people. That's just in our catchments of Maroondah, Yarra Ranges and Knox. So it's an enormous number of people. Um, and I think tonight having all of you here to hear from someone like Pat McGorry is probably testament to how concerned we are as a community about mental illness. For those of you that aren't familiar with what our services um, run, we actually have the, as Kristen said, we actually have the, uh, I consider the best mental health nursing program in primary health care in the country. Two awards are testimony to that and some of them are scattered through the room. Those guys do an awesome job. We have our bushfire counselling service. We have our um, child mental health service for zero to 12 year olds, which are co-located a lot in primary schools, as well as our suicide prevention service for those people who are low to moderate risk that have suicidal thoughts, feelings and behaviours. Professor Pat McGorry is a leading international researcher, clinician and advocate for mental health reform. He's the executive director of the Origin Youth Health, a world-renowned mental health organisation for young people that's put Australia at the forefront of innovation in the prevention and treatment of mental illness. Teenagers and young, and young adults have the worst access to care across the whole lifespan, partly because their physical health problems are, are much less than other age groups, so they don't need the health system in a, in a physical way as much as, say, little kids or old people. But as you all know, young people, you know, they're supposed to be flourishing and progressing with their lives. They're on the threshold of productive life and, and they're very exquisitely sensitive to something going wrong. And, and, and ha developing a major mental illness is, 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 is absolutely, you know, catastrophic if, if it interferes with these sort of developmental pathways. So the specificity comes later and that's what we're exploring. And that's we've all been learned from this idea of intervening earlier with psychotic illnesses and then thinking, well, hang on a second, you know, there's a spectrum of, of illness here. When you, when you see people in a headspace, they have not read the textbooks. You know, the young people, they come in, they have not read, they haven't done their homework. You know? So they don't present with clear-cut pictures. They come in with these sort of undifferentiated problems and mixed in with relationship problems and, and whatever, family problems. So, so we've got to have um, a much more flexible approach and diagnosis has got to be able to guide the sort of treatment selection that we want to use. So I think you can say that these are ideas whose time has come, that it's, it's a progressive, progressive idea, mental health reform, early intervention, but it won't necessarily happen unless it's, it's, it's delivered. You, know? you can see how much trouble, without being too political, the government got into for having great ideas and then op not implementing them properly or, or stuffing it up you know, when they didn't try to implement them. Um, and governments do that all the time. So implementation is a really important thing. And I, I, I've tried to use my, um, and, and all my colleagues as well, our work as clinicians and researchers as, as tools to actually try to improve the situation, not just for the people we treat, but in a wider sort of sense. So research and training are, are great strategies for that, to improve our knowledge. We don't know enough, you know, we've got to learn more about this. Thank you.